David, you're on mute if you're talking. Yes, that's what I was going to say. You're still on mute, Dave. There you go. There we go. Is that it? Yep. I did a double on mute. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. It's uh, six o'clock, so we have a quorum. So let's move ahead. Uh, let's call this meeting, this workshop to order. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt this, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Second? Brian. Brian, I'll thank you. Um, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And one more, Brian. Are you good? All right, good. Uh, any opposed? So it looks like we have at this point four board members. I think Marianne said she would be coming on late. Uh, so let's go forward with that. Um, our discussion items, uh, it's a flow for this period of time. This uh, just as a little background, this is a workshop. It's basically an add on to our workshop on Friday, January 21st, when we were talking about, started to talk about the capital improvements. Uh, it's our first detailed discussion on capital improvements since a detailed report a year ago. So for everyone's memory, uh, we, uh, the board contracted a study from an external vendor, Lowe's Design, and they created a report. This went up online about a year ago. I think it was January or February. Uh, the board looked at it and wrote up uh, for our continued consideration some uh, basic guidelines. We called them considerations for parks and facilities master plan, some guiding principles. And we came up with 15 items. And we'll refer to those periodically in this discussion as appropriate. Uh, so those were our operational standards for decision making and moving forward on this issue of capital improvements. We started to gather information a year ago for some immediate wins. This is all, of course, before the pandemic. So we were looking at pickleball and lawn sports. We had some internal uh, estimates on those costs and the internal estimates we thought were quite reasonable, but when we put them out to bid, they became quite challenging. And so then the pandemic hit and we slowed things down. Uh, the board's aim of protecting our assets, we decided to halt any expenditures until this June, end of June, uh, from the capital improvements funding. It also gave us time to look at what some of our options were. Uh, we also asked in October for management to prepare uh, a capital improvement strategy uh, to help move us forward. We asked for that by March. Here we are February 1st. And so we have uh, some, some identification of options, um, wide range of options for our consideration as we move forward with our capital improvements. Also at the time that we, when we we're looking at, it was specifically pickleball in a location right next to the dog park. We were uh, looking at um, putting in pickleball courts there. And when the actual formal bid came through, one of the things that came out of that was a drainage issue, which required some major um, changes uh, to that location. So this late this fall, this board undertook a, um, a request to have a drainage evaluation report done. That came in, I think it was last Wednesday and was posted to the community last Thursday. So we're gonna start with that tonight and then move to the capital improvement strategy. Those will be brief uh, discussions by management and then we'll interact with that and any questions. Uh, then we're gonna move to a board discussion of those and potential options. And the most important thing before we finish the meeting tonight, we wanna to end up with what are the next steps? Again, this report, this capital improvement strategy is if you will, draft one, I think it's labeled draft 1.1. And it was really what we asked for the inventory, but it's a precursor to whatever our next steps. So we wanna review some of the various options and identify clearly our next steps. Now, are we gonna finish everything tonight? Are we gonna come up with answers? Are we gonna vote on anything? We're not voting tonight, we're discussing, and we'll continue this discussion at our every other week workshop, which will be this Friday. That's one of two agenda items for this Friday to continue that discussion. Uh, so this is the beginning of many discussions and all of this is gonna be done within the framework of our budget um, that Brian has, Brian Kinsel has reported out monthly and Brian, can you offer just a quick summary of 
How much, you know, what does our finances look like in terms of the capital improvements funding? What do we have today? And I know you reported it at a board meeting last week. And what do you anticipate in terms of growth of that fund, a, you know, in, in the next year or six months, whatever time period it is? So, Thank you. so in the capital improvements fund at December 31st, because we reported November last week. So okay. at December 31st, we have $940,000. Um, and then if you took our budget for 2021, we would have growth of $700,000 roughly. So you, you got about a million six of potential funds. Um, you know, can we build a community center? No. Can we do some projects? Absolutely. And, and I, I would add one thing, David, to the comments. Please, We're talking please. about October. And we also published and discussed a couple of times a CCFC rethink, rethinking yeah, yeah. the first field and stuff like that. So we really are using this. We lost a year, but on the other hand, in the year, we've learned a lot of things. And the reason, going back to the budget, we're really rethinking the civic corridor. And two years ago, we were thinking, is it going to be profitable? Is it not going to be profitable? Well, we've had, really, we think we probably have got about $300,000 a year of expense for the corridor. And yes, some people might think they can raise this revenue. They're not going to raise us that much revenue. So you take that across 4,000 homes, it's costing 70 or $75 a home. So we really had discussed with the rethink coming up with solutions that allow easier access, maybe a key card system like we do with the pools, using it for many different things. We've discussed the concept of the first field for pickleball and adult sports and stuff like that. So we really wanted to start challenging and thinking outside the box with this process too. Yeah, so that's very helpful. Thank you for that. That was, um, again, we've had several discussions just about that rethink, just to, to get the ball rolling. Uh, again, and so again, your, your, your budget summary of 940,000 in the bank now and another 700,000 over the next year. So that's by, if I'm correct, that's by December 31st, 2021. So 11 months from now. Uh, so that's what we're looking at. Again, um, what we're, I think what this board is interested in and what, what this board tried to do early on just before the pandemic hit was look for some easy wins. And as I noted at the very beginning, we thought we had some easy wins for lawn sports and for pickleball, but the budget figures that we had developed and our management had developed internally, when we actually went out to bid, it um, presented lots more than we had in the bank or even have in the bank now. So uh, with that, can we, and if any other board members have anything to say in terms of context? David, can I ask you to answer one question? You didn't Absolutely. how you wanna handle resident comments. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is start with a drainage report, just so we get a quick quick synopsis together, look for board reactions, and then the capital improvement strategy. Um, but I'd like uh, what I'd like to do is have the board discussion before we get residents comments, because otherwise we'll get stalled. And we won't get to, I mean, we'll, we just got to keep some sort of order and some sort of flow. So let, let's have Neil and Michael or whomever is presenting on the drainage summary. Uh, again, all of us have had this since last, I think it was Thursday that we had it posted. And so what are the highlights? And then what's the brief highlights of the uh, capital improvement strategy from Neil? All of that in total is 71 pages. So I'm gonna turn it over to, and then we'll, so we'll save resident comments. We will do that like we do in a workshop. We'll do that after we have comments from the board. So that'll probably be 20 or 30 minutes from now. So let's start with, um, and I see, I see hands going up, but uh, I'm not gonna look at those for about 20, 30 minutes. So let's just start with Neil and Michael, if you have any comments about the drainage report. Can we start with that? Yes, sir. Uh, Mike, okay. I'll, I'll start real quick um, and then I'll ask you to chime in for our chat earlier today. Um, first off, I want to thank our, our board members and our residents that um, decided to attend tonight. I mean, it's, it's kind of short notice, but it is a priority. And from what I saw in the waiting room, we actually have quite a few participating, which is a good thing. Um, I want to encourage most of you that have questions after five minutes, if you just give us some time, I think your questions will become more precise and more specific. So thank you in advance for, for your tolerance. Just let us get through the, the crux of some of this. 
Um, so with respect to this drainage evaluation for the athletic complex, um, it, it, goes, it goes hand in hand with the evaluation of common area elements, which could be used to enhance and or create more amenities. But, um, you know, there's a blessing in disguise about me arriving in July. It was the middle of hurricane season um, or quote unquote, the wet season. And instantaneously, despite the fact that we were in a pandemic and amenities were reduced, I actually had quite a few concerns expressed through my parks and rec um, team of uh, sports that weren't actually able to get onto their scheduled time due to the fields just being wet and the conditions had they continued playing they they would have damaged it even further and by the way for those that are listening for our sports teams thank you so much because um you know you you guys utilized and shared your information with us which actually helped to get us to where we are today so to me it's it's very simple um we just we have drainage issues in, in the athletic field complex and like I told the board is maybe this is an issue maybe it isn't I don't know but I do think when we have homeowners and this extends beyond excuse me residents and homeowners and it extends beyond our organized sports that are missing out on utilizing this amenity um, I, I just I just felt it was important that we at least try to get some answers so we can provide them to the board and then the board is equipped with the appropriate amount of information to make decisions. And so at present, and, and Mike can speak to this a little bit more in, in depth, we have, we do not have the um, top level drainage. We, it, it drains, but it drains slow, especially when we have a lot of water in the wet season. Um, and of course, as many of you know that are listening, that creates havoc with your pre-scheduled um, events for your athletic teams or even for the individuals who just want to utilize walking around the field. Um, you shouldn't have to have waterlogged shoes just to do that. Um, ironically, for those that have expressed some, some concerns to me about the methodology in which we did it, um, I, don't, I don't golf personally, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, the conditions we're experiencing aren't unique to celebration. I just want to make sure that that's understood. Um, even top tier golf courses have been experiencing some of the same concerns with um, water, you know, water saturated um, locations, low spots, maybe drainage needs to be updated, et cetera. So um, I'm not saying that to minimize it. I'm just saying if, if, if there's a, a silver lining, um, we aren't the first to try to explore what we can do to mitigate and or remediate completely. Um, before Mike talks, I, I wanna make sure people understand this drainage evaluation was not done. It, it's, they proposed three phases. We've only, we've only encouraged phase one at this point, which was a overall understanding of the existing fields and the other fields that haven't been developed and what our potential um, issues are gonna be. Um, we have the ability to then get more finite understanding if we want to talk about, let's just say pickleball for the sake of argument, please don't, don't assassinate me people, I'm just using that as an, an example. If one of the existing vacant fields, that's, that's the amenity that the board thinks is going to be best use of our, our residents investment. Clearly, this report is the initial and then it could be dialed in specifically to the needs of the amenity the board's entertaining. So these are all draft documents. These are not final and the board has not created any finality. So um, I'm just going to echo what David said. Tonight isn't a mechanism to get to the finish line. Tonight is the first step as part of the journey. So Mike, um, you're, you spent more time, you deal with more of the adversity than I do. Um, so can you give us a little bit more detail with respect to the drainage report? And then I'll speak more to the evaluation of the uh, common area amenities when we get there. Sure thing, can everybody hear me? Yes, You're sir. Good. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, well, basically just a cliff note version of this report. I mean, some of these things we kind of knew were there, but we just wanted a little bit of clarification. One thing that I learned from this is that our water table is not that far below um, our fields. Um, that is, and then again, this goes back to the comment about the golf courses. I mean, everybody deals with these things. I mean, right now in the dry season, it's showing right around eight feet below the surface. 
uh, when we hit rainy season, it can go up by a foot and a half. Uh, and again, did that? Those are the extremes on both sides. Um, but and that that's one thing that we deal with, and that's something that engineers work with. Um, the other thing that we were uh, looking at in this sample is the quality of the soil, um, and not necessarily the quality as to have things grow on it. Is actually the quality on to allow uh, water to seep through it um, at a reasonable rate. Um, on a scale of one to ten, uh, one being the best, ten being the worst, um, through the soil samples which were taken. Sorry, uh, back up just a second. Uh, the samples were taken uh, both on fields one and two, um, the grass fields for the sports, um, lot A and B, um, and the dog park as well. Um, so those are the two vacant lots, one that we use for parking uh, for when we have events down at the, um, down at the field. Uh, then there's that other vacant space in between the CDD building and the dog park. Um, that was also tested, and the dog park was tested as well. Um, so uh, what was found on the soil um, is the top layer, um, again, best being one, worst being 10, is probably an average between seven and eight. Um, I am not an expert at this, so please, you know, please forgive me when I'm not mentioning what types of soil in the, in the exact rock that they found. Um, but we could have better soil. Is it manageable? Yes. Um, that was one thing I did like to hear see in that report. Um, is this, and again, from that, it depends on what we want to do with the field. Um, if we want to keep them in the soccer fields, then we would have to probably go a little bit more in depth on a drainage solution. Um, if we want to do pickleball, maybe not as much. Um, so again, you know, and that that came the. Uh, let me go back again. It came across the, all the soil across the top has that not favorable um, quality to it. So drainage, again, is going to be something that has to be factored into anything that is developed down there. Um, but this gives us a little bit more clarification um, and an extra set of eyes on the project. Well, Mike, just a, a question, and maybe other board members have a question on this report. First, I do appreciate your uh, summary version. When you rated it 1 to 10, is that average rating of 7 to 8 being that's at the low end of the scale, is that for all of the locations? So... Uh, the, the two fields and then the, the lots where we do the parking now and the other one right next to the dog park. Was that a consistent um, rating? Yes, sir. I mean, as the okay. best that I could interpret it, um, okay. Okay. yes. Okay. Just, yeah, okay. And so it depends on how we might want to use different of those settings, uh, which would determine what the fix is, if you will. Correct. Is that, a, is that okay? So that's a, that's a good summary. How about any comments, questions from the board on this? Vanessa, Brian, I think Kevin is here. I think Kevin came in. So, so let's, let's cut to the chase here. So they came up with three options for a fix. And I'm on the last page of the- Page seven, page seven. Page seven, you know, the option one is 124, putting fill in only is 105. Um, is that for both fields or is that 124,000 as an example for each field? That is a good question. I'll have to get that clarification for you. Okay. It looks like it's the next page. What, uh, I guess it's page eight on the PDF. Page eight. Sorry. Okay. So, I mean, I guess what we're going to have to do here is we've got this report. We're gonna to have to find out what were the original specs supposed to be? Because when you, I reread this report again this afternoon and it said that it has got a runoff slope that was in the original specs. That could be that it was put in wrong or it could be that we've got a lot of settlement because we had to bring in a lot of sand and soil and you could have settlement. So it would seem to me that we're going to have bring in the original engineer to find out what's happening here. If we ended up going with the rethink option of using field one for pickleball and adult sports, you know, croquet and that, we'd have to redo the field anyway. So we'd only be paying for field two if we did a fix. Um, 
So that's an advantage. Plus then what's not clear to me also is, you know, how, how long would it take to do this and what would be the downtime and everything for this field as we went through these changes. That's helpful. Can I just add a quick thing, um, just sure. for some history? I want to make sure I, in the in other meetings. This is Vanessa, by the way, for those that don't know. Um, when the when the field was originally envisioned, the original engineer, who we still do still deal with um, in within within celebration, so we could totally get back to them. And then we had an owner's rep who was Danny Bumpus. So I would encourage Mike to get together with um, to get together with both Danny and with Mark Vascunas in order to just buy, make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel. And just for I'm Vanessa Winter, by the way, I heard I saw Muriel's comment. And Mike, Mike, if I could ask, originally when we had the work done a little, a little over a year ago, there was questions about the retention pond. Did we get comfortable that the drainage ditch is fine and the retention pond is fine, so it is strictly just drainage to the ditch? That is the issue? Uh, Brian, again, reading through the report, I did not see anything there that highlighted that there was a major issue with the drainage, I mean, with the retention pond, uh, and it was more with the drainage itself. But they looked at it? Yes, they did. Okay, good. And that's a good answer. Thank you. Yeah, that's helpful. Anything from Kevin or Diana at this point? Neil, good. Shall we? I'm just uh, yeah. still, still kind of educating myself on here. I back up exactly what Vanessa said. I think Mark has uh, a good amount of information on this. He saw this project from ground to where it is now. And uh, I would definitely encourage that conversation between him and Mike. And, and Neil, just for clarity and for clarity for our audience, what we want coming out of this meeting is clear action steps. So there's some brainstorming now, we'll summarize at the end. But I have stored that as a brainstormed item, as an action, should we choose to go that way, but so that we're real clear and focused. Um, David, agreed. Um, this is Neil Bresnahan speaking. I'm your executive director. Um, sorry, just referencing Muriel's commentary. Um, this is, uh, if nothing else for the board, this is meant to be a supplement and a resource really to the next report we're looking at because I'm not comfortable making a recommendation to the board nor is Mike at present about remediation of any of the fields or potential future site. Um, because I, I just, I find of great value that we invest our resources to the highest priority. So um, this report is on pause until we get prioritization of where you want us to focus. And so, but that doesn't mean we can't get some questions answered now that would obviously help the board with that decision-making. So, um, but, but again, this report is not meant to be the end all be all. It's, it's one mechanism and one resource to supplement to get the board feeling comfortable with how you want to prioritize projects moving forward. But the purpose of this report was to establish if we thought we had a $100,000 problem, a million dollar problem, or a $2 million problem. And now that we know drainage and retention pond were assumed to be okay, and we know what we're talking about for the first two fields, really the costs will be somewhat of a factor of how we choose to eventually use these fields. So it'll be impossible for you to say, this will be the cost for lot B or the cost for lot D if you have no clue how they're gonna be used. It's gonna force us to, to have certain other evaluation projects. Correct, and Brian, I mean, not to one up you, but it, it could be a $0 project if the board determines that, you know, some moisture from, you know, from time to time seasonally is crippling the ability for us to utilize the athletic complex at its its maximum point. So it, it could be a zero dollar problem. Or I mean, I'll throw something out there that I don't want you guys to hold me to court on this. But you know, some of these drainage issues, especially if we're talking a hard court surface like a pickleball facility, some of these drainage issues goes away because there's going to be built in drainage from those courts that's going to be under the turf going out to the appropriate. So again, this this isn't I, I echo this isn't meant to be nothing nothing beyond a resource for the board at the present time 
Okay. Well, one thing that'll be very interesting when we get to public comments, because I have seen, we have a few soccer people on here is to see if they care about a wet field a whole lot. If, if it's right. the world or something, they would wait in time until there's a down period of time and then do the fix. Agreed. And I'm not an expert in any of our, our um, sports and or residents use of, of the facility. So I, I think, again, I started by saying this, this is, this is a good resource for our homeowners to have to give their feedback to assist the board. I, I do believe that. So, so uh, shall we move on to the, um, to the larger report, the, the one which, which was really the inventory of all of our facilities? The, um, Neil, do you want to? Um, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, why don't you just jump into that? And, you know, I gave an introduction that, you know, we asked for an inventory of what might go where. And, and so maybe you can do a couple of highlights. Like, what, I mean, it's, it's absolutely kind of clear. Yeah. Neil, would you mind if I lead with one comment? Please do. I just want to tell everybody in the audience who might watch this when it's recorded, we are not politically stupid. There, this is an inventory. We understand a lot of the questions. So it's, we're not looking for pitchforks. We're not proposing to do things that are politically stupid. This is an inventory that allows us to look at the big picture of everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's a neutral presentation of what might, what might feasibly go anywhere or, or not. You're on mute, uh, Neil. You're, there we go. I am. I'm sorry. That's okay. actually, and what's not you what's not utilized is probably the the most important part of this workshop. So, um, for those that are actually on video, uh, you can see the um, the draft report that the board received. For those that are listening via phone, again, this is Neil Bresnahan, your executive director. Let me reset the table. So, in August of uh, 2020, August 14th, 2020, Crow workshop. Um, we were still kind of in full swing of pandemic. The board decided to freeze capital improvement expenditures, and they set a future date of uh, June 30th, 2021 for, um, for that to expire. In the interim, um, there is a document that circulated, but really if, if E, section E, which says from the board is we need management to provide us with a listing of all potential locations that CROA owns that are potential sites for capital improvements. Part of the conversation from that meeting, um, which isn't in the document, but it was part of kind of dialogue back and forth was, it would also be good to identify areas that we just need to get off the table, period. They're not really conducive to enhancements or amenity features. Um, and, and I, I agree that there's a lot of places that we shouldn't consider, but that wasn't the request. The request was to get a complete inventory, eliminate those for viable reasons, recognize those that have viable reasons. Um, and so for those that are observing and listening, I'm gonna echo Brian. Um, this is an inventory to get the board caught up to what's viable, what's not, so that they can prioritize and refocus on the areas that are gonna have the best bang for the buck, 80-20, if, if you will, Pareto principle. And the goal was that this work would be completed by March 1st, 2021. And I'm gonna say this a lot, um, it's February 1st. Our goal was to get the board the literature it needed, which will give the board an additional 30 days to direct my team on where they'd like us to dial in even more so that come March 1st, our board is prepared per that August 14th document that at the expiration, at the end of June, the board definitely has four months of consideration time. So table set in this document, you're gonna see us talk about passive parks. Um, passive parks are what we are designating as uh, not feasible for any future enhan enhancements due to either size, lack of parking, lack of infrastructure. Infrastructure could mean lack of electricity um, or just basic square footage. So um, Celebration Village, um, Savannah um, currently does have features, has limited space and parking. We've decided that wasn't viable. Veranda uh, has benches, has grass here, but limited space, limited parking. So we've excluded those. I'm not sure who's driving the screen. Thank you. Um, so Lakeside Park, again, please understand this is an overarching evaluation. No decisions have been made. 
so Lakeside Park is one of the bigger ones. It has electric, uh, one phase, three phase, has lighting, has potable water, has irrigation, has a parking lot. So it hits all the criteria. Um, and you'll see possible improvements. You guys are going to get sick of me hearing this stuff. But really anything and, you know, everything for the most part is a potential enhancement at Lakeside. So we could have potentially enlarged meeting rooms, stage structures, the pool, concession stands, splash pad, additional parking, bathrooms, um, security fencing I see in here, additional tennis courts, bocce ball, pickleball, shuffleboard. So not all of these can happen, but these are all options. Long Meadow um, has a phase one electric, not phase three, has lighting, has potable water, has irrigation, has limited street parking. So um, some improvements there. In, in situations like this, this is where we would focus on more of um, less congestion. So grills, gazebo, fountains, horseshoes, could be shuffle ball, could be bocce, probably not. I, maybe the courts, uh, depending on peak, maybe, maybe not. But again, all options were requested. We also, uh, Nikki Patton, who's our parks and recs coordinator, she piggybacked on this and she actually added a few more things that the board hadn't had in its original outline. And one of them is in a lot of these parks, these passive parks, we can actually consider the, uh, I'm sure everybody has seen them, the, the mobile workout stations where each park every hundred meters, every half mile or something, there's a, you know, a dip, a pull up, a monkey bar, something like that. Um, I thought that was fantastic. If, you know, when we get to our um, our, our cornerstones, you know, the, uh, the health and <laughs> social kind of sense of place. That's very interesting. I actually, I thought I, they have them in the community I live in. I'm just too lazy to use them, but they are cool. Um, whoever's driving, can you go down a slide? East village, uh, Hippodrome. Um, I didn't know we had something called the Hippodrome. Now I do. So, um, Phase one, electric, yes. Phase three, no. Lighting, yes. Water, yes. Irrigation, yes. Uh, limited street parking. Um, so shuffleboard, potentially bocce ball, horseshoes, uh, grills, workout stations. Again, Founders Park. Let me be the first to tell you I don't agree with any changes to Founders for some ideological reasons, but you don't pay me for that. So possible improvements if the board was to consider Founders Park, shuffleboard, bocce ball, could have a fountain, could have some workout stations. Again, I would consider this passive, but it's not my decision to make. Uh, if we can go down. Uh, East Village. So the passive parks that we've eliminated, um, sorry for my vanatia, Taui, I believe, and Pond View. Limited space, limited parking, but they already have some um, hardscape, garden chairs, um, open grass areas um, already, some trees, but we've excluded these. So, so Neil, just in the interest of time, um, this is consistent all the way through for the yep. passive parks. Yes. And you've hit one of the key areas in our community, which is Lakeside. Mm -hmm. Can you fast forward, unless there's something else, if you, no. can you fast forward to the CCFC? Cause that's our other big, sure. and, and, and I, and you've, you've made a good case and we can talk about it as a board about founders, founders park, but can you jump to, cause I think it's consistent findings with L, everybody right. see, has the report. Um, and again, some of these things like North Village, there were some areas, East Village, uh, there's some areas, but the other big one is uh, the Civic Quarter. Right. So really, you know, there, there's really nothing we, we can't try to do at the Civic Corridor. Again, as Brian emphasized, there's there could be limitations in terms of water, water flow, and uh, standing water, but it has electric one or phase one, it has phase three, it has lighting, it has parking, it has irrigation, it has potable water, it has restaurant. I mean, literally everything you guys want is there. So just looking through the list of the inventories from 2019, the 2015 to 2020 uh, parks and rec plan using all the resources, by the way, that's at the end of this document for those that would like to understand what we referenced when going through the possible improvements technically the civic corridor you could have a performing arts center a community center an active adult center um, an indoor gym with um, game courts pickleball court shuffleball you can have playgrounds bocce ball croquet workout stations natural parks uh, you could do an elevated boardwalk over there walking track um, it could even enhance i know tennis center had come up at some point but really 
um, when I've kind of behind the scenes just to make sure our, our guests and our residents that are listening tonight, I mean, you know, and this is this is all in, a, in a, an amazing professional working capacity, but this is where my team and I really need the feedback yeah. from our residents and the board because we could do anything at the athletic complex, the Civic Corridor, but before we start dialing in and utilizing some software and some tools on what it might truly look like for you, we kind of want the direction of the prioritization of said things. Clearly, you know, again, the 2019 study was our, our, our main focus, but if there's other items, now's the time to talk about them. Okay, very good. So Neil, just to, just to clarify, prioritization in or out? Yep. I mean, in or out. So just one, uh, while you have this image up, and then I want to turn to Vanessa and other board members, something that I didn't see, and now that I'm looking at this image, now I get it. Uh, this particular possible improvements talks about walking track around the lake and fields. And I thought to myself, I, I walked that property and I don't remember a lake. Now the aerial view shows the retention pond, which is mm -hmm. the lake. So, so that area is owned by CROA, just to clarify, and is something that could be developed. Right now, we don't go there, correct? It's not publicly accessible, but it could be. Is that is that a it, fair statement? Right, because it technically is part of the existing civic corridor of land you own, we included it. And Mike, right, right. Um, I'll need your help here. I believe that highlighted area, it's to the right of the photo, it's yellow, it has a red outline. Right. If I'm not mistaken, doesn't that have to have not, I forget the word, not historically significant, but a specific architecture. Uh, landmark building. Landmark building on it if we're going to develop that area, right? Right, up on uh, Celebration Avenue. Actually, the word is it's got to be an iconic building. Iconic. Thank you, Brian. So one thing that, I just that, wanted to jump yeah, that is in there. real quick with this one. Um, something I, I learned about years ago was there was actually funding. Um, and again, who knows how true it is? Again, this is Kevin. Um, how the DOT over there could actually give us some funding towards putting in a walking track around there. So. When we're looking at that dollar figure, please keep that in mind. Um, yeah. And I have some people that we can connect with for that. Okay, okay. I just wanted to clarify that on the map and in your language. Uh, Vanessa, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just have a couple of quick points and because unfortunately Good. I'm gonna have to bow out here pretty soon, but I'll, okay. um, I wanted to make two couple quick, quick points. Um, one thing prior to Neil joining um, that we had discussed, I'm sorry, um, this is Vanessa Winter. I'm one of the board members. Um, one of the things that we had discussed was at Lakeside Park was perhaps doing some type of an amphitheater off the back where the stage is. Um, that's one area that we had um, that we had identified um, as a potential, not really more of an outdoor performing area um, that's not noted on the possibilities. Um, and I still want to go down. I know that I only have what a month left, but I'll go down and I'll go down on the record of saying I am a firm believer if we have a current asset that we are using for a specific purpose that we do not break it down and repurpose it for something else. Um, so I am not personally in favor of tearing down one of those soccer fields and using it for something else or not, not soccer fields because we use lacrosse, like football. We have other areas that we can develop that I hate to repurpose. We've already put money into it for a specific, um, for a specific area. Um, so those are the two comments that I have um, and then I'll move on. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Um, how about other board members? So what we have, again, part of the workshop style is to have the board respond to issues first, and then we open it up for the community. I'll go. Please. Uh, Thank you, Brian. On, on the list here, Neil, I, I, one of the things we've talked about in October was community gardens that we thought we could even put down on B. So if we could just add that to the list. Probably another thing we need to add, add here, I don't know if you call it an improvement, but we're doing community concerts um, out there already. And we know that there is a um, real chance to do even more community concerts. 
and, and while we don't have it on here, I think parking really has to be listed as something that we think about because we know we've talked with everything out there, possibly using a, quite a bit of lot fee for that. And Vanessa knows how I feel about repurposing the field, so I will, because um, there's many people listening, I would counter that I would be in favor of repurposing the first field because the cost would be de minimis and you really look at what we are the utilization if the first two fields are working um, and we've already got lights out there we've got a bathroom out there and everything I think you could repurpose the first field and have more residents as a whole use it because I think the real issue when you look at lots B and D and any major changes to them it'll get quite expensive because we learned with building fields that you had to bring in a ton of dirt and, you know, when you heard Michael talking earlier about the quality of the dirt, well, if you have to bring in tons of dirt, you get many different qualities. So I think that kind of feeds into the process. Okay. Let's your hands up again. Yeah, just a quick, um, I, one thing I don't want, to, and I, I, Steve and I have had, Steve Northridge and I have had this conversation and I've said it repeatedly um, when we were building the dog park and we were doing anything. Land prep, right? Whatever you're going to be doing, has to be prepped for no matter what you're going to be putting on there. Please do not lump that into the cost of whatever the amenity is that's going to be placed on there. For instance, pickleball on that particular, whatever particular area we go, right? We have to prep the land before we put on there. You don't tag on the additional $400,000 onto that particular project in order to say a pickleball cost, you know, one point, however many million dollars. So that's just my caveat. We did, we really worked hard when we were building the dog park and we were doing all of that to separate the two. Doesn't matter what amenity needs to go on there. If you're gonna develop the land for something that it wasn't meant for, right? The whole civic corridor was junk. That's why we got it. <laughs> so if you're gonna put, if you're gonna put junk, if you're gonna put junk on there, um, it, if you're going to put something other than junk, you have to put money in order to invest it in order to put on there. So that's just right. I, just as a reminder for that. Okay. And, and 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 adhering to what Muriel's saying, I have an idea. But Brian Kinsel, I'm a board member, and I agree with what Vanessa said about we should isolate the cost of the activity versus that needs to be built versus land prep, but it still takes us back to. I think we should be thinking about the fact that we've got million to a million and a half dollars to spend. And if it costs a ton of money to prep land, we can't do other things. I, I, I will still advocate that we as a board think about what is the best way to get many victories for the residents with the understanding that as Island Village comes online and we move down the line, we can continue to develop things, but we are gonna have dollars and cents that are gonna drive decisions. Yeah, so thank you for that, Brian. So we're, part of what we're looking for, again, we're gonna summarize near the end uh, with clear action steps, is part of what we're looking for is some reasonable short-term wins at the same time acknowledging that having some money set aside for the longer term aim, because clearly out of the study that we did, um, top priorities were adult senior center, a community center, performing arts center. So, so that again, as you said at the beginning, that's not a $1 million investment. I mean, that's multi-million dollar investment. How about other board comments before we open up to resident comments and then some back and forth and clarification, dialogue, direction? Any other comments, Diana? Yeah, David, this is Diana Vassello. I'm a member of the board. Um, my comment would be that I, I personally don't have a problem repurposing the one field um, if we can go to the amenities that are most wanted. Pickleball is the one that everyone is, we have a lot of residents that are anxiously waiting for that. The walking track, which opens up the field uh, for more residents to be able to use that area, whether it's around the current fields or I kind of like that around the wa around the lake, but I don't know if we can do that if we have to uh, use that as the iconic building. Um, and I think that's where we need to focus our efforts. Um, I think the tennis center is a great idea because that could also maybe open up some uh, areas down in Lakeside that we can uh, repurpose. And also the Performing Arts Center are making at least the field 
easy, more easily converted to performing arts as uh, we've been very successful with having uh, entertainment venues out there. But I think uh, having it where it transitions easier and it's uh, actually set up, I think now we're kind of doing it just to do it because we, they were getting creative during the pandemic. So that's, that's my stance on it at this point. Good. Evan, anything else at this point before we open it up to residents? I'm good. Okay. Uh, if no one has anything else, I'm gonna start with uh, Muriel. Who hey, had her. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, can I make one, this is Brian Cancel. Can I make sure. one comment? Um, Diana mentioned a tennis center. With, no one's gonna know what that is. So let me brief people very quickly. We have been approached about whether we would be willing to take the space that is on Celebration Avenue and Celebration Boulevard leading into North Village where we've talked about an iconic building going and if we would be willing to let a group explore putting a tennis center there, um, USTA approved tennis center. The board has not discussed this. I've sent notes to the board. I told the parties that we would not use CROA money because we've got other uh, options for CROA money. The board would have to discuss if we have interest, what if the tennis center could satisfy the iconic building and stuff like that. But before we have an explosion of emails and everything else, I wanted people to know that's what's been talked about there and people know about what I know, but it's not on the civic corridor. It would be on that undeveloped space at Celebration Boulevard and Celebration Avenue. And so what, just one specific comment on that, I would propose that we have a separate workshop or that be included as a separate workshop, perhaps at the end of February, if that's Perfect. all right. Yeah, um, so just a comment before resident comments. Um, since we have limited time, I mean, we are not going until midnight. Uh, we will close down no longer than eight, no later than eight o'clock and we will start uh, starting to wrap up about 6.30. So with all res due respect to fellow residents, please limit your comments. If, if, just try to be stray, stay as focused and precise as you can on that. Uh, we'll set a three minute outside but limit, but uh, please try to do it in one or one and a half minutes if you can. I'm going to start just to tell because I saw the hands up. Uh, Muriel was first. I saw Stephen Starks. Then I'm going to go to Steve Northridge, Jerry Barr, and Patty. So uh, let's just start. If you would unmute uh, Muriel, ask you to unmute yourself. If Muriel would unmute. If not, we'll move to the next person. Now it appears that you are muted. No, can I, can you hear me now? There you go, Muriel. Yeah, yes. Okay, I'm Muriel Quinn, 20 plus years in celebration. Thank you all for understanding Zoom etiquette. You must identify yourself and the position that you hold each and every time you speak. I have heard throughout this conversation, there was a survey, a 2019 survey. Guess what? That was pre-pandemic. You have all focused on the pandemic and the impact it has had on the community. Your 2019 survey is moot. Life has changed throughout the world and celebration included. So everything you have based this on no longer counts. And that is my 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. That was a, that was actually forty five seconds, but that was just just fine. Thank you very much. I'm okay, going to move no, this. I'm sorry. It was forty five seconds, Brian. That's fine. That's you fine. Can, this is you. You can. That's fine. All point right, we're, that out. Yeah, we're going to go. Don't mute me. Don't mute me. I am tired of all of you discounting the residents. That was an, an unacceptable commentary, Brian. That was it. Was David. And I'm sorry. David, uh, whoever yeah. you are, you didn't identify yourself once again. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to Stephen Starks. 
If you can unmute good yourself. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, Stephen Starks. Uh, we've been residents in North Village uh, since 2003. Uh, I have uh, two graduates of Celebration High School and one is a current sophomore. I want to advocate for space for uh, basketball. I noticed on the Civic Corridor um, page that you have indoor gym and game courts. That would be where I think this would fall. Uh, when we moved to Celebration, there was public space downtown uh, and, and even a private option if you were a member of Celebration's fitness center. Uh, currently that public space downtown, um, what we found is very often interrupted for events. The, the, the goal posts, uh, the goals will be removed uh, when, when there would be events downtown, things like that. Neither goal is regulation height. Um, and also Celebration Health decided a few years ago to remove the basketball court that they have. So current, right now there's no um, publicly available space in Celebration to play a regulation basketball game or practice. It's important to us, our, 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 my, my sons are basketball players, my current sons are on the varsity team at Celebration. Uh, he has really nowhere to practice unless he practices out in the backyard uh, when they're not on in school days. I've talked to other parents uh, on the basketball team who they're not on the meeting tonight, but I think they would share the same desire that there will be some public space for basketball. Uh, that's my comment and I appreciate your time. Very good. Thank hey, you so David. much. Yes, please. Uh, go ahead, Neil. Hey, it's, it's Neil Bresahan. Hey, uh, Stephen. Um, I just a quick, quick question for you. And it's really more so just to give the board more opportunities. If there was more basketball available, I mean, clearly an indoor court would be ideal from what I've just heard you say. Um, are you looking for just more opportunities for a basketball period or is it specifically an indoor court at, at the, the corridor? No, more opportunities for basketball. Uh, anyone okay. with kids in the, in the age range, I would say from probably nine years old up to 16 years old. If they play, uh, you know, AAU or travel ball or anywhere right. like that, we have to go to Kissimmee or we have to go up into Orlando. There's no facility available here to, to, okay. to host that. So I'm sure there'd be more playing okay. if you had awesome. indoor. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Steve Northridge. Uh, thank you, Steve Northridge, 1130 Tapestry Drive. I'll talk for a minute about the engineering report. Um, the scope of the engineering report was done by MBV Engineering. It's really focused on what was described as two sports fields and a proposed one-story building. The rest of the corridor was re never really addressed in the report. The geotech firm, uh, Alderman, uh, Alderman and Associates, did borings on the sports field, dog park, lot B and lot D. And I'm really not sure what this proposed one-story building is because where it aligns to these borings because it was not identified and certainly referred to as a concession stand and office building, which in my view, it's already been built. So I'm not sure why they address that or spend so much time talking about the foundation for it. Um, also, NVD did not discuss any analysis or costs associated with lot B or D. So I think this sort of puts the board sort of at a disadvantage because you don't really have a, a full picture of what goes on in the corridor. I'm not making any judgments where anything goes as far as that goes. I'm just trying to say it's a piece of information that you don't have, which I think would be valuable. And I thought this report was going to address that. In the report, it also talks about things like permeability of the soils to be substandard that are underneath the fields. And also the, the grading, the as built. In other words, after the, field, the design was 10 to uh, certain 1%. And this is like a 0.6% grade or something like that. So the as built, so in other words, after it was done, was substandard to the actual design. And further, they point out that type of field should be crowned in the center and have a different profile. And they talked about adding 2,500 cubic yards of dirt and fill and potentially having to reside the field. So one of my questions would be, if this 2,500 yards is necessary, cubic yards are necessary to crown the field or one or two of them, and then they say siding is included, but it's hard for me to believe that the, all the siding of those fields is included in that figure. I'm thinking they're referring to the siding just for the damage associated with installing these, these, uh, uh, these geotech um, capabilities that they're gonna put on the outside potentially, I don't know. But the numbers don't seem to align in my mind with the scope of work that they're describing as necessary for these fields. 
And remember, even if we just if you decide to use one of the fields for other purposes, one of those fields will remain and something has to be done there. So I think it's worthwhile exploring that, at least understanding what that's all about. Um, also, I, from my view, I think the civic corridor, you know, looking at the report that was put together by management and looking at the various options where they suggested pickleball, I looked at those from a standpoint of size and north-south orientation, which is desirable for pickleball. And I really didn't see any, any spots that were large enough. And also, I think uh, Mike Jackson sent a report out. He mentioned this as well. You know, the noise associated with pickleball in certain communities wouldn't fit in some of those areas. So I think really the only viable areas would be somewhere on the civic corridor where that's on the field or if you're able to fit on lot B or D, that's great. One of those things would work out. So that's sort of my thought. Uh, I did would take with interest that they point out Lakeside Park might be a pickleball place. I just didn't foresee enough space there, but maybe see. there's another idea, maybe repurposing the tennis courts after a tennis center was built something like that. I wasn't sure what the thinking there was, but nonetheless, so that's really my comments. I think the further the engineering report should be explored further to better understand what it's really telling you. I think there could be more information to be gained there that could advise the board on what could be done with some of these other fields. And uh, I think probably you're going to end up with the civic quarter someplace and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Thank you very much okay. for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. That's very helpful. Um, we're going to move to Jerry Barr next. Uh, does any board have a con any board member have a comment at this point? If you do, just stop as we're between residents. Okay, uh, Jerry Barr, then followed by Patty, then Celia McFadden, John Trout, and Greg. So we'll Hi. start hey. with Jer Jerry Barr. Oh, okay, it's Eileen oh, Barr. Eileen, sorry, thank you. Okay. Um, I agree with bits and pieces of all three, all of the previous speakers. Um, I have always been a proponent of um, having a variety of activities out in the civic corridor. Um, it, it hurts me that it just sort of only is being used at certain hours. People don't go out there during the day. I, I think as Steve Northridge just pointed out, we need to look at those other areas. Um, there are, uh, there are areas that and activities that, that don't need the most perfectly graded space, even just uh, passive parks or whatever. If you have uh, land that's not in really great condition, you can sometimes turn it into something like a parking lot, like a park. Um, the one thing, two, two points I do wanna make. One, before we take, uh, one of the fields, one of the important reasons for developing the civic corridor was to get a uh, league play off the in town fields where on a Saturday morning you would have buses and, and, and other cars uh, blocking the streets and uh, significant garbage and um, permanently dwelling uh, goalposts like we used to have in the East Village rec area where there used to be the lacrosse uh, goals were up there permanently, which prevented people from using it for other kind of pickup games or casual games. So we also have at this point, we actually have teams playing out there. So it seems to me that we're not reinventing the wheel. We need to make sure before we move forward, and this is the most important thing, is that those entities, our soccer people, our lacrosse people feel, and I think it should be fine, that two beautiful courts, uh, two beautiful fields should be more than enough to address the needs of celebration in terms of grass fields. Um, but again, I'd like to make, uh, but I also think Muriel had a good point. We don't exactly know what the world is going to look at when we all emerge Will kids just go back to the same activities? Will parents go back to the same activities? So I thought it was a very, very good point that the world as we know it may be different. But I certainly think that this is the point before you move forward to either take uh, the first field away or not take it away is to sit down and do a very serious discussion. Not what they want in the most wonderful world. Of course they want three fields. And yes, you may have to give up some tournaments but you know, are the two fields adequate for us to have a good lacrosse and soccer 
program in celebration. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, David. Uh, we're, yeah, go ahead, Trump. If, if I can just respond, uh, this is Brian Kinsel for everybody, um, yeah. pro board member. And I, I, I hear the comments about the first field and I understand them. I think one of the things that's going to be important, maybe with one of the speakers or our next step, is we're actually going to have to have somebody from like pickleball and adult sports actually work with town hall to come up with a design on the first field to see if it's even adequate. Because we have not, and I don't mean an architectural drawing here, I just mean measure the darn thing, measure out some courts and do some basic stuff to even see if it works. So when we're talking about this in concept, we have not built a, what I would call a simple diagram to say what would even go there and would it work? So that is something that is missing still. Exactly, exactly. And that will, that will, will, will translate that however that's packaged into action item uh, near the end. Um, next person was Patty. This is Patty Phillips. I live at 1105 Blaze Street. Um, one of the things that we are talking about is um, all these sports for the youngsters in the, in the town. Uh, some of us aren't youngsters anymore. We don't run fast and jump high. So um, I think instead of uh, compounding and increasing the tennis courts and the fields that we already have, it might be smart to start thinking about pickleball. I am um, especially uh, active in the uh, Celebration Croquet Association. And at this point we are playing in what we call the pasture over in each village. Um, sometimes it's mowed, sometimes it's not. Um, we do not play your backyard croquet. We play competitive croquet and we do need a better surface. Um, I think it would be smart to use the field that we already have um, financially. Um, we do have, we have had a plan put together with all our measurements that Brian talked about that we can meet at town hall and give them. Um, I think we had a good plan to go on Indigo before COVID hit and then I think that was the end of that plan. But it just seems foolish to have more soccer fields, more tennis courts, more lacrosse fields, that we already have in town, we do not have any place for lawn sports, for people who don't play soccer and pickleball and lacrosse and basketball. Um, and I think that's my point. Uh, we would be using the fields now, um, except they charge you to use them. We have no dues, we have no fees to play croquet. We could go up there during the day tomorrow and play croquet except we don't, we can't afford $35 an hour. We just don't have the funds. Uh, and, we, and we're, although we have a pretty good group, we don't know who's gonna be there obviously because we don't have teams. So it's a little, little iffy. If they would open it to us now, we could play up there. Um, but I think we should focus on lawn sports, uh, not just bocce ball, but croquet as well. Th thank you very much. So, so thank you, Patty. Just a clarification, when you said we want, you know, we're proposing use the field we already have, you're talking about the one over in East Village. No, well, there was the plan to put a croquet court over there, right. a professional court. I'm right. talking about repurposing the soccer field, um, half of it maybe for, for pickleball and half of it for croquet. Oh, I see. Um, so, okay. But it, it, what we need is minimal. Um, okay. Basically, all we needed to have a mold once a week. Um, so we could be using it now if, if, we had, if we didn't have to pay for it. But I think that'd be an excellent place for it. And we'd obviously financially much more prudent than putting in a whole new court over in East Village. Okay. David, can I ask Patty a question? This sure. Is yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Patty, I was under the impression that you had to have special grass cut to a certain level to do this. Well, we do if you're going to put in a professional court. Um, as I say, we play in the pasture over there now, so anything above that would definitely be an improvement. Um, if it's cut low enough, it's doable. Um, we, obviously, we would like it to look like a professional croquet court. Um, I know that the probably financially that would probably not be feasible, although it would be a wonderful thing to have happen. We need space more than anything. Um, the field over there is so, is so rough that uh, some of the people can't can't use it because it's just too hard to hit a ball from one end to the other without falling over. Um, so even with just short grass, that would that would be a feasible. Obviously, we would like to have a professional so, court. But so Patty, considering so, the finances, we would do with that. So Patty, just to follow up on Brian's point, and, and this was an earlier point. One one of the things I think we'll walk away with was having 
uh, the groups that have been involved, having groups involved like the pickleball group and the lawn sports group involved with some, if you will, conceptual design, what would the needs be? Some of what you're outlining right here. So um, stay tuned we, on that. We have all that. We have that all put yeah. together before yeah. COVID hit. So we will get up, we'll get that up yeah. to town hall. And the other comment, just if, if you look at what this board came up with as our overall guiding gu guidance, it's very consistent with what you said is, and one of the things we said is give priority to those groups and topics where no facilities currently exist. So we identified it as one of our frameworks. Um, so I, I, yes, I saw that. Yeah, but so I, that'll, but, probably, that'll probably carry forward. Excellent, thank you very All much right. for your time. Thank you, and thank you for um, signing on. Uh, we're gonna go to Celia McFadden, then John Trout, then Greg, and then Mike Jackson. So let's start with Celia. Hi, Celia McFadden, can you hear me? Yes, you're good, thank you, Celia. 1007 Celebration Avenue. Um, two things. I want to piggyback on what Patty just said about the, the adult lawn sports. That would be wonderful for the croquet, even though I don't play croquet and I do want to learn how to play pickleball. But I also want to piggyback on what Steve Stark said about basketball, but I'm going in the direction of baseball. And I've had this discussion over and over again with Crow in the past um, about how the children that are 13 and over have no place to play baseball in celebration. And they're just not children from celebration. They're children that go to school in celebration. And these kids cannot play anywhere in celebration. We have to go to South Orange, like Steve Stark said, for their basketball. These kids have to go to South Orange to play baseball. And it's an, an embarrassment that when people go, well, where do you come from? And we go, oh, Celebration. Oh, Celebration don't have their own fields. So like every single sport has been hit on tonight, except for baseball. And I've brought this up time and time again at Crow meetings. And it's just like, it's just like, ignored in the past. So I figured why not bring it up now because okay. every single sport has been hit upon. Basketball, lacrosse, soccer, flag football, lawn sports, which I have to learn how to play pickleball. But like I said, these kids cannot, they don't even, they're not even allowed to play at the high school. And there's a full blown out baseball field at the high school and they can't play at the high school. So Okay. I just thought maybe that could be a suggestion about baseball. Hey, David. Very good. Yes, Neil. please, Neil. Please. Hey, Celia, are you still on? Yes. Yes. Hey, it's Neil Bresnahan. Um, I, I know we really were just trying to get through the crux of this report. Um, we actually did identify a location that we feel a baseball field could actually work at that currently is kind of used. So it wasn't Praise God. It, it, Celia, it wasn't ignored. Um, mm -hmm. It's just you, you don't see it on the civic corridor, but we did isolate a couple other areas. We think we could make baseball work for some of the, the young men and women in town. The so just, older, the older group. Little League plays fine here on the fields now. This is for the 13 and over. They need 90 foot bases. They need 90 foot bases yep. and they nope. don't have them. No, nope. we so it's it it it's not on this slide, but we, we did look at a couple areas and that was considered. So it's not completely off the table. I just wanted you to know. Thank you, I appreciate it. We, we do it. have other locations that we, we think might work for other other sports like baseball. So thank you. Uh, no worries. That, I just, that, would, I wasn't, be, that it, would be great. It's a big report. I don't think any, I don't, I didn't expect anybody to invest more than just a glancing view, but um, anyway, it's just, it's a small win because I know my team really did try their hardest and this is why we're doing this. If we did miss something, this is where we want the feedback so we can repackage this for the board. Okay, thank you, appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank Neil, you. Neil, as part of that, and before we go to John Trout, as part of that, and I know we highlighted, I'm sorry, we skipped over this page because I pushed you to get to the civic quarter. We also have the K-8 fields and looking at 
what that looks like, the partnership, those are owned by the school, but we have some arrangement with them uh, that we can always look at uh, for potential improvements there. With with, with, if, David, if, David, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but those fields at the K-8 are not big enough for the older students to play at. Okay. The, the okay. Base, then, and in fact, Steve Waring is the one that pointed out that originally the fences were up further and they were moved back by the school district. So yeah, originally they were able to play on those fields, but they, the school district moved the fences back and made the baselines and everything smaller for the younger students. I guess my point is all of that could be looked at or re, maybe some reconfiguration, but that's that would just, be great. That's just uh, that's just another option. Uh, Thank let's you. let's move to John Trout. You would unmute yourself. Oh, hey Dave, can you hear me? Okay, I can. We can hear you. Good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, John Trout, two hundred six Drake Street, uh, thirteen year resident of here of Celebration. Uh, working with the adult program with soccer with Marco Macia. I'm also uh, brought in the Orlando City Soccer School celebration, which we uh, came in with um, as a D. We are the actually the first uh, soccer school for Orlando City. We're an embassy school right here in celebration. And um, I can kind of speak to the report, I guess, David, first would be on the wetness of the fields and kind of what's happening with one and two, because we've you know, we've been there almost, I guess, a little over a year now and, and, and on a five to seven day a week basis. And um, I, my feel is there's going to have to be something done. There's going to be times that, that when those water levels come up, there's nothing going to be played there. There's days that it can't be mowed. Um, those, some of those areas have standing water. So if it's not remediated, you're going to have a coordination issue, which we had. And, and we worked wonderfully with Neil's team and they did a fantastic job in moving the sports and the teams with lacrosse and, and the adults and the school and, and the, uh, the rec leagues. Um, but regardless of what happens with that from a report standpoint, my view is, is that, you know, you just got to figure out a way to, to remediate some of that issue or there's just going to be, you know, days and when, when nobody's going to really, you know, croquet ball is not going to go four inches. So um, definitely, I think something be done there. In terms of the sports and, and moving it, you know, the, the biggest things I see, regardless of what happens, is, um, you know, the ingress, egress, the parking issues, even when we just have, if it, you know, on the days we had all three sports, the lacrosse, rec league, and, and an adult program or a school, you know, we were having to stagger, and Neil's team and myself and our guys and, and Lee and, you know, everybody was trying to figure out we need to move our times because, of getting back in there. It's not just getting in there and finding a place to park. It's, it's how do you get in and get out and getting the people in and out, you know, even with no COVID problem. Then you have the ingress and egress with COVID that's, you know, that is a secondary issue, which expands the time, um, you know, to that. So those are definitely things to, you know, to look at. But, you know, the fields as we came in were, were, were put in as a, you know, as a sports complex, as, as a soccer fields. And, uh, lacrosse and things like that and we you know with what we have going on now with the you know the 150 to 300 uh, rec league kids with the 75 to 80 school kids that come in and play soccer with the you know the 60 to 70 lacrosse kids we have over 200 adults uh, celebration adult residents that that are coming out from ages 3 to 73 you know, two to three times a week that are playing, you know, soccer and games and, and some are at no charge. So, you know, those are all things I think we need to look at as to you know, what's being used and where and the purpose and, you know, going forward, you know, the maintenance issues. I come from a 25 year background in, in uh, live event sports and entertainment. Um, so, you know, we've, we've definitely sat with Neil on and, and kind of looked at all these various things. So, you know, it's not going to be an easy job for you, but there's, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, but it's a beautiful facility, you know, as far as the soccer world goes, celebration in the last year has become and known through the school and through the facility and the, and, and the way it's been put together is, is one of the nicest facilities in Central Florida. So, okay, um, you know, we're on the map. Good. Thank you for that. That's helpful. Uh, we're turning to Greg and then to Mike Jackson. And if you, if someone else wants to speak, please raise your hand. 
Okay, Greg, <clears throat> please unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Okay, uh, Greg Filak, Stickley Avenue. Uh, a couple observations, and, and without getting into specifics on which sports or prioritization or whatever of, of those different things, and I appreciate the, coming out to that. Uh, a couple of comments, and I, I guess some some challenges I'm having with this. Number one, as I read through the report uh, and very lengthy, uh, I am struggling with the idea that we're we are looking at a six figure fix, no less than a six figure fix with some of the different alternatives here. Uh, and, and the tone and tenor of what I'm hearing is, is we're jumping straight into what would we need to spend to fix the fields? These are 18 month old fields. And I know I've had some discussions with some of the board members uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one here. I will say publicly, I am really having a challenge uh, that we are not looking at what uh, recourse we have with the original builder to get those fields up to par, whatever we choose to use those fields for. Um, as a homeowner, I am frustrated that not only were those fields presumably not built to spec is what I think I'm reading in the report, and maybe there was some settlement or whatever happened in there, but I, 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 I think I'm reading they weren't put into spec is what our engineering study has come back with. Um, and yet we're, we're jumping right towards hundred or $200,000 fixes on these things. Uh, I realize that may have some legal implications that maybe the board isn't prepared to discuss in public forum here, uh, but I, I'll say whatever we do with those, uh, that, that needs to be exhausted uh, before we start looking at spending money into them. I'm, I'm struggling as well. I have not heard anything as, as um, what might we do different. Again, we're just kind of jumping at different ideas here. Uh, I am frustrated that we accepted those fields in that condition and we did not have any apparently any sort of quality check on that or you know engineering assessment to say that those things were done if we're outside of our year or whatever that might be within law what is it that's just coming to us now that we're saying you know too bad so sad we need to go uh, spend more money to fix these things so that's that's point number one um now, number can, two hey, David, yep, go ahead. Brian cancel can I ask answer Greg right there and then we'll let it continue um yeah. At the beginning, Greg, and you might have joined late, I did say we had to go back to the original contractor and figure out what's going on. So we have not blown that point off. Um, as we had actually had um, builders reps that work with us and we got to follow up with them too. So those are all valid questions. They're not being blown off by, by the board. I just want everybody to hear that while you follow up on your point. And, and, and Brian, I appreciate that. I, I... I've been on since the beginning. I didn't catch that and maybe I heard it wrong, but I, 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 what was led to the report, what I was thinking or hearing out of this was, was we were jumping ahead on that one. So um, I'll say, I do agree with Vanessa's point. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with brand new fields of changing them again, whether we agree or don't agree with whether we needed two fields or three fields for soccer, whatever, or lacrosse, whatever they may be, particularly in light of the fact we've been spending the past year in COVID um, I, I'm, if we're looking at a business case of justifying it from a numbers perspective, uh, the past 12 months is not indicative of anything, uh, that I think would be reasonable for us to assess if those are the right use of the fields or not. So I'm, I'm struggling with where we're jumping to talking about reallocating those fields. Um, last thing I'll throw in there is I'm, I'm, I'm uh, also a little bit curious. I had not seen anywhere in here any discussion if this is kind of a longer term strategic uh, discussion, uh, you know, Island Village is not too far around the corner. All the uh, comments I saw in the, in the report here were specifically around existing celebrations. So as we look at assets and potential things, and there are going to be residents there that Crow is going to be responsible to them as well. Um, how does that fit into uh, your, your evaluation? And then last one, I, I guess, to, to Muriel's initial comment of the 2019 report, whether you agree or disagree with it, I guess my question would be, is the board's perspective, is that out the window? Is that still being weighed into the consideration here? I mean, there was a lot of time and money and effort that went into that. Are we kind of starting from scratch? How, how's the board approaching that? Thanks. Let me just start, start on that. Thank you, Greg. Um, I don't think that's out the window. That's one person's perspective. Uh, that is the latest community engagement process that we have, which, which identified what our residents wanted. Uh, they went through focus groups, they went through discussions with management, they went through a community-wide survey. That is the latest we have. And so this is our first in-depth discussion about how do we move forward. So uh, it is not out the window. But um, I think we'll pull all that together as at the end as we think about um, action steps. Um, also, just a comment about Island Village. 
as we look forward towards that, that was not part of Neil's assignment. It was to look at existing assets. Uh, so Neil and his team looked at existing assets and that's the, um, and, and potential assets. So it's not just crawl properties. Uh, so, it, um, so that is the, that's why the K-8 fields and Stetson are in there. Um, so that, anyway, so that's, and David, this is Brian Kinsel. Can I jump in just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, sure, please. And then we'll go to Mike. Island Village, as you know, Greg, you and me walked it with Mattamy about three weeks ago, and right now it's sand. So we actually are very involved with the building of the pool, with the building of the clubhouse and the park facilities there, knowing that we'll take them over. And Neil's been front and center in this with his staff. So we have that had that conversation and there are not even drawings yet on the rest of Island Village. So we are aware that Island Village is coming, but that process could take a few years. That yeah. really, we absolutely, I thought had said that we are not dismissing the 2019 thing. I realized COVID happened. But I think what COVID has done has made us rethink the strategy around the three fields and how we make these facilities work for all residents with a limited amount of funding being and trying to be smart about it. Just to, and one other comment, Brian, on, as we have been working with the island, I'm sorry, with the Mattamy Company, Mattamy Corporation that is building Island Village, we have been working with them from the beginning, from when they got their contract uh, to try to influence them it, you know decisions are made by them and the celebration company in the county we can influence and so we they have they talk with us what would you like the building next to the pool to look like what would you like in it and then we are also talking with them so this goes to greg's point uh, you know might there be some facilities in phase two or phase three um, or even in phase one where we would want, you know, we want tennis there, we would like pickleball there in, in addition. So, so yes, there are active discussions as they build out that facilities. Uh, so, so let's turn to Mike Jackson. Mike, please yeah, unmute. Thanks, David. Uh, Mike Jackson, 413 Sycamore Street. Um, I guess my first, well, a couple small things. I agree with the comments about going back to the original contractor. Did they actually, you know, meet the specifications and so on? We've got to have some kind of re recourse there. That would only be, you know, appropriate in terms of your fiduciary responsibility to go and pursue that. Second, um, little concerned that people are taking a position already that no, we're not going to change an asset that we already have existing. You know, I think this process should be transparent, it should be open and everything should be on the table. There's really shouldn't be any sacred cows. Um, it just seems like that would be the best for the community and search out what's the best for the community. I love soccer, I'm not against soccer. I don't know what the utilization of the soccer fields are. I've asked that on several occasions, not been able to find out what that is. Um, I think that's something we should know. We all know that we spent a lot of money on them four point whatever million, six or seven. Uh, we all know that we're subsidizing it yet as residents going forward because we're losing roughly 300. I think we, we lost, lost Mike. Mike. Yeah, we lost Mike. I don't hear him. people that sign up for it are limited in terms of their access. We Mike, have to limit the people Mike, to three Mike, or four Mike. times a week because otherwise there's a waiting list. Mike, you got so, cut off. You might want to get back a little bit. Back up. We lost the last 30 seconds. You went dead. Okay. Sorry. Are you there now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the utilization, I think you have the fact and make a decision and there should be fact-based decisions. Utilization of soccer should be known. Um, how often are the courts used or the fields used? Are they used? So you come, are you coming in and out? Is that true for everybody? I think these are all to be. Yeah, we're losing. We're only getting about half of what you're saying, Mike. Yes, are you on a wireless connection or phone or something? Something's not working with your connection. Yeah.
I don't know if he hears us or not. Uh, maybe he'll David if he comes back, but uh... yeah, I think we just need to move on. Um, any other comments? Any comments from uh, Diane Finney raising her hand? Would you unmute yourself and speak, please? Thank you. I'm Diane Finney, uh, Artisan Park Condos, 1230 Right Circle. And I just want to thank the group here for uh, having uh, done the hard work and presented um, all these wonderful options. Uh, it's kind of exciting to think of what might be done. And I'm sure that with enough um, participation and feedback uh, of a good plan will be hammered out. I just wanted to um, say that I express an interest in the pickleball courts and croquet courts uh, being put into the civic corridor. I think that'd be kind of nifty. And then uh, I'm very curious about this tennis center, uh, possibly with indoor uh, courts. I mean, uh, that would be amazing. I'd love to learn more about that. And I also want to strongly encourage that you keep the five courts that we have at Lakeside and uh, don't repurpose them. But then that's my, uh, that's my expressed wish because I'm a, a tennis enthusiast. So thank you very much again for all the work that's been done. Great, thank you, Diane. Uh, anyone else, if you want to raise your hand, you can do that under reactions. Um, Bill, Bill Grindle. Please unmute yourself. I'm unmuted. Hi, Great. Bill. Uh, North Village. And I don't have any particular one of these things that uh, mentioned that I have any enthusiasm about. I'm sure I'll do some of them. But conceptually, the way this has gone, I, I really appreciate having a survey of all the different places things might happen. And we don't know what will go where. Uh, but I think the Civic Corridor isn't big enough to accomplish everything for everybody. So we need to be flexible and look at other parts of the community where we could put smaller things that require less space or, or will work in, in different neighborhoods. And I think that the, this report is very good. And I think that some of the comments on this call uh, about things that were missed, I think they should be added and a revision uh, maybe come out. But my view of where we go forward is I'd like to see the most things for the most different people. So rather than throwing a couple of big ticket items in, if it's possible to spread it around for the benefit of a lot of different enthusiasms and a lot of different communities. Uh, so it is in fact the participatory uh, process where somebody gets pickleball and somebody else gets croquet and maybe there's more youth things, maybe, uh, maybe not. I don't know, but uh, uh, I think this is something where we can all share and having something in our own neighborhood, if there isn't anything there already, but also uh, meet the greatest number of needs. That's nicely said. Thank you for that perspective. Um, we have Mike back. So can you unmute and try again, Mike Jackson? I must not have paid the bill. Can you <laughs> hear okay. me? Uh, we can hear you loud and clear now. Thank you. Good. I changed over to another part of the modem. So we'll see if that works. Good. Um, I don't know how much you heard, so I'll just be very brief and recap again. I think, you know, the recourse that we should have against the, uh, the, con the construction company that did this, obviously that's something you need to do. Um, so I agree with Greg and his comments there. Second, you know, I'm concerned that people are taking a position that we're not going to repurpose an asset, something that's already built. I think that's premature. I think detailed discussions, all the information, uh, alternatives considered, costing out things, looking at cost benefits, all those things, there's many variables here. All those things have to be considered. So for anybody to take a position at this point that this is absolute, that this isn't going to happen, I think that's very, very premature. Obviously I'm a pickleball fan, I'm a lawn sport fan because I think those are two underserved areas. I don't know what the utilization is at the soccer fields. I think that needs to be known. I think we need to know if they're residents, if they're outside, if they're the Orlando City Soccer Club that's using the fields, whatever that might be. I'm a season ticket holder with Orlando City, so I'm a strong supporter there. But I think those are things we need to collect and really need to understand how that asset is working. The other thing is we know that we're subsidizing that field on an ongoing basis of the fields. 
uh, something in the range of $300,000 plus. So the fees that we're charging for that field are not adequate to make it even self-supporting, let alone the sunk cost we have of, I think, roughly $4.7 million. Pickleball and lawn sports both need space. Pickleball functions seven days a week. So seven days a week, three to four hours a day. There is pickleball happening on a small tennis court at Georgetown with four pickleball courts jammed on there and balls and players fall, flying all over the place because it's a con confined space. Running into the tennis net that's in the middle or the fences that surround the tennis court. So it's not an ideal circumstance, but obviously the popularity, we have to limit the sign up on pickleball so that everybody has an opportunity. It actually gets posted the week before the playing times and 18 people can sign up for a session. And we've got, we're oversubscribed all the time. And it's just growing. I've watched it grow the last three years. So whether we build it on lot B or we do it over um, the uh, field one or wherever it is, I think they all got to be evaluated. I think we all know it's got to be in the civic corridor. So you've got two options, B and field one. We have to consider all the facts and look at it from a very broad perspective and make a good fact-based decision and avoid just taking emotional positions that this isn't gonna happen for this particular reason. That's it, thanks, David. Well, thank you, Mike. Glad you got in with the good tone. Uh, we're at about at the end of uh, our open resident comments. I think we're ready to move unless someone else wants to raise their hand with a last comment. We're ready to move to try to summarize and talk about some next steps. What might be the next steps that emerge from this discussion? So we can give management a one voice of uh, what we would like as they move towards the March report. David, we had a person ask a question about Stetson. Can I just answer that very Sure, yeah, oh yeah, I didn't see that, but please go ahead. Um, Stetson University is something that we have talked about at board workshops and board meetings in the past. Um, we would love Stetson University at a reasonable price. Right now, the owners bought it in, I'll get some of my facts here a little wrong, so excuse me, but they bought it in January of 2020. COVID hit, they've had a tough year. I believe they bought it for 4.3 million and they've got it on the market today for 6.5 million, I believe. Um, 6.5 million is not what we're willing to pay. We believe that we are one of the best um, users of the building because it would make a wonderful town hall and could be used for a lot of different things and maybe we would merge different entities around town into it and that would give us a lot of freedom with 851 building on an economical basis. Having said that, um, we're not talking to them right now. That's a price we can't afford. I do understand through the grapevine, they've been talking to a few people and it's not been working for them. So Stetson is one where we just have to give it time and maybe it'll evolve in the future, maybe it won't, but there's nothing imminent going on right now. That's a good summary. So, so let's talk about what our next steps might be. What, I wrote a bunch of things down. So uh, just to put these on the table for the board to discuss, uh, just weigh in as, as to what is the next step. Uh, one of the things I heard, uh, this goes back to the um, drainage study, is look at the fields. Are they up to spec? Are we within any recourse time period? Uh, anything about the original contractor? So that's, if you will, an investigation. I don't and Neil, please comment if this seems like it's reasonable or not reasonable or appropriate or not appropriate. I mean, it just, just to look at, I mean, you know, we obviously you're, this is after, I'm sorry, this was before your time and it was before Mike's time that it was signed off on by others, prior boards and so forth. So is that something we can just look at and get more information on if we're within that or within a time period? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm open to, and again, you know, the, a deficit to the board is that you actually do have a new leadership team in town hall. So honestly, I'm not going to say no to anything because to me, this is a discovery process. I know it's old news to a lot of people, but for this team right now, 
um, we need kind of direction and, and we're, we're not in a position to say no because we need to catch ourselves up to where the board and the community is. So um, I know that's a, that's a long-winded answer, but I'm open to anything. I, I've not researched enough yet to be digging my heels in on any capacity. Uh, so yeah, go David, ahead. If, yeah, please. Well, this, this is Kevin. I was just going to jump in and suggest that perhaps we, we go ahead and we say we need to call an executive session at least to discuss with Tom Slayton, the attorney, um, what options may be there, request that he reviews what has happened and, and take it from that point. Or whether it's an executive session or Neil makes that request to Tom just to look at it. I'm, I mean, it may be that there's no recourse, but Tom, our attorney can answer that, whether it's executive session or not. But what one item is to get some further clarity on what the status there is, what our options there are. And, and, and we may learn that, yeah, we can, we can pursue it and it may take five years to pursue it through the court system we, if, if there's a violation. So that's I just think for the sake of the community and, and ourselves, right. it, it just goes ahead and puts that to bed, whether there is something exactly. or isn't something. Exactly. Let, let's look at what the options are. So that's one item. I, I agree with I agree with Kevin, and I would like us to have the executive session because sometimes okay. there are more than one way to skin a cat. So we should under okay. Okay. where we're at, we may find a valid option that's a whole lot different than a lawsuit or something. <laughs> okay, so so there's a two part, if you will, a two part action item that I see. One is investigate what the documents say that we have. Um, whatever was signed off on, what the specs were, and pull that together, and then pull an executive session so that. Tom can, uh, so our attorney can look at what our options are. Does that sound like a reasonable summary of that? Two parts? Yes. Yeah, David. Yeah, yeah please, um, Dan. Yeah, with that, I mean, specific, again, I, you know, I, I didn't want to get into that component tonight, but um, I would really, really, really prefer the board let myself and my team head down that road and let us report back to you with what we find. Okay. Um, I don't really, my professional recommendation is unless of course you're, you know, as board members, you can do whatever you want. But um, I, I think with things like this, if you let, again, a newish team, maybe do a discovery process, review it. Um, our ignorance to the corporate memory is actually a benefit to the board right now. And we can present something at least somewhat independent from previous, I don't know, grievances, frustrations, project, you know, delays, et cetera. Um, but I'm totally supportive of an executive session. The board knows I, I like those. And um, I do think no matter what the outcome of the discovery is that uh, Tom Slayton needs to be consulted on it. Okay. All of this hoping that um, my initial request to the board to let us do some independent soil samples of the drainage, hopefully I, I'm wrong with all of that. That's, that's the hope for the benefit of our residents. Okay. So I, David, I would be happy with that being priority one. Could yeah. we possibly have priority two be, I had discussed actually looking at the first grass field and even seeing if it would work because, we, you know, some of our conversation assumes it would work, but it would be nice to have someone at town hall work with a couple of people from the different groups to actually draw it out on paper and yes, this works or no, this is a dumb idea so that we don't waste time if it, if it can work. And I'm not talking a professional drawing here. I'm talking about, you know, going, you've got measurements for the darn fields, scratch it out on paper, build something quick and easy. And yes, everybody's happy or no, they're not. So, there, but, but, so Brian and then Diana, I'll go to you. Uh, there's two parts of that. Uh, one is uh, sketch out some designs for, the, for field one. And second is engage the two groups. Uh, and and it, so we're talking about multiple designs. If there were, I think Mike Jackson uh, made a comment there using uh, four courts at uh, Georgetown. How many courts would be the ideal? What would that look like? Does that take up half of field one? Does that take up the entire field one? Uh, half of field, you know, and what would it look like for the lawn sports, you know, all in one place or not? So drawing up multiple options, is, is that consistent with what you're saying, Brian? 
that is absolutely consistent and so that everybody on the phone call hears me, I still believe field one is the most economically advantageous because it's already got a bathroom and it's already got lights and it's got some netting and stuff, which is an advantage. And I'm hoping that the board can sit here and then and find several other wins too. So if we're gonna go down this path, we don't spend a lot of money on one item, but we have several items where we can probably make residents happy. Because one thing I did like about the inventory is some of the different parks around town and whether you could put uh, exercise Basket or, or basketball in North Village yeah. or whatever, wherever it is. Hey, David. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Daniel and Diana. Hey. Hey, Brian, it's Neil. Um, with that, I, I, I like that conceptually getting some of our groups or at least the leadership within those groups to um, kind of put stuff on paper. Can I, let me be very careful if I say this. Um, we're gonna put together schematics or at least somewhat kind of a, a baseline of the wishes irrespective of budget, right? Kind That's of like a, like a wish list. Well, let's let's have everybody on this call understand that we're not going to go down any million dollar project pass. We're trying to find ways that are astute, sensible. I think everybody heard that a year ago, um, which is why we picked field one, like I said, because it's got a bathroom, it's got lights and stuff like that. Um, there are certain advantages to that. I think I think when we had the famous million three fifty five, we had ground repairs, but we had lights, we had this, we had that, we had a million sure. things. Scope creep is not good right now. If we're going to try to do several things and we've really got a million dollars to work with an aggregate until time plays out. Okay, I just I again I, I like the idea of getting some stuff conceptualized because I think we'll come up with some great concepts from especially our our active participants. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't telling them to somehow reconfigure their their best and you know like with their wish list if if it was very minimal in terms of finance so um i think both can be accomplished that's why i'm clarifying that we're just going to get and this goes full circle to that original document back in august where um i i know the board wanted to bring in our committees that are involved but i didn't want them coming in until we had vetted this process first so that we can push them in the right direction to utilize their time Sorry, David. No, okay. Uh, Diana. Um, my comment, you know, I think to take it a step further, um, Brian, you know, you talked about bringing in the parties that want to be involved or need to be involved to kind of sketch out the project. But we had originally touched on maybe doing a bit of a, doing a um, task force made up of a group of stakeholders that are interested in each one of the different items that we're pursuing. Um, I would recommend that we do a task force at this point, bring a group together, uh, have them work in conjunction with town hall to make this move faster. And at a fa you know, at this point, we need to move at a faster pace. Uh, I'd like to see some movement on this as we get, you know, get these assets in place. So that would be my suggestion. So Diana, to clarify, a task force comprised of whom? Uh, yeah, I think it needs, of course, it needs to be Parks and Rec, but I think it also needs to be the uh, pickleball group. It needs to be the croquet oh. group. The, yeah, 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 the, yeah. Okay. the ones that we want to pursue those assets as fast as we can. So Brian had mentioned, and I dovetailed, that was working with a group. So are you envisioning one group, one task force that is comprised of that, or is working with the individual groups sufficient? I think we may need to put a task, a, a group together because one may have to give in where the other one, you know, which, there's only so many assets that can be repurposed or places for things to go. So I think they're going to have to negotiate together. Um, but, you know, we can start out individually, but I think at some point they need to come together and put together an overall plan okay. on what they would like to recommend. Okay. Maybe that's some, that's maybe that's one specific thing we can talk through a little bit more on Friday at our workshop on Friday about what that might look like. We want to give management clear direction so it's not confusing. And one thing, David, that I think we're going to have to talk about as a board, and I think this becomes a workshop, and I'd be interested in other board members' thoughts on this subject. And this is Brian Kinsel talking. Um, is 
rental fees. What do we, how do we think about rental fees going forward? There's a question in my mind now. So are these people don't pay rental fee for using other places in town? Should we have rental fees out here? Do we just bite the bullet and say these are community parks and we have a reserving system and we're and that's the way they're gonna operate or do, do we charge rental fees and what does that mean and how would we govern it? I, I mean, I, I'm i sure I can see Neil look at his thing going, what the heck did he just say? But I think this is a question we're gonna to have to ask because if we're gonna have the first field and then we convert it and then everybody says, well, I can't afford to pay pickleball there. What did we just accomplish? And so when we think about pickleball, soccer, all this type of stuff that uses a civic corridor. How are we going to think about the cost structure and the revenue structure going forward out there? Because I don't think we can make a decision to repurpose something and then say, well, we're going to charge you $100 every one and use it and no one uses it. Then we've been really stupid. So I, I think we've got to have this conversation. And so, so part of that is for those facilities, is there a fee? And if so, what? Is that a fair statement? Is there a fee for rental of pickleball or use of pickleball? I mean, what is our rental? And that's something we could workshop. Uh, is there a rental fee for using the tennis courts sort of thing? I appreciate all that guys. I just don't want to put the cart before the horse. Let's, let's see what's realistic. Yeah. Let's see if it's within reach and, and then we can get to those details. Yeah. How about other action items? Again, we have an, about 15 minutes left. Any other action? Item? I think we, we had several action items that were embedded, Neil. Um, and I think um, Vanessa highlighted near the end before she left about um, some incorporating some of these, like, like her uh, the piece for Lakeside about a performance area, what it would look like, performing arts area. I think Brian brought up earlier uh, community gardens to make sure that's on the radar screen somewhere. Um, I think someone else brought up parking. So parking, you know, just identify that as a utilization of space, which is preparation of what might a parking surface be. I mean, our options now is, you know, you leave a certain area as it is with grass and then under wet season mud. Uh, we talked about, there was identification. I think you wrote this under the civic quarter, uh, like a walking track where might, what might a schematic of that be? What might, what, what are different options of walking track? Is it around the existing three fields? Is it larger than that? Does it also include uh, that um, lake area that's behind the existing fields butting up to Celebration Avenue? So maybe a schematic of a walking track? Or again, walking track or tracks are different options there. I mean, David, anything's possible. It's just we, what we really want to focus on is that 80-20 that of what, because um, now we're talking about management team, we're talking about volunteers, like hypotheticals. I, and again, it's up to the board to dictate us. I just feel if you give us your top 20 list and we start chipping away one and then down the list, I feel like we're going to satiate more of our residents that way right. versus coming back with another kind of generic report that isn't really dialing into the focus of what the majority want. And I don't even know if we have a majority, by the way, I need to be careful with what I say. Right. Could I real quick, just throw something out there um, sure. and tying into kind of what Vanessa said before, this is Kevin. Um, if we can go ahead and just start with management or request management, if everybody agrees to just get our cost of developing the lands, let's go ahead and get our cost of developing the land that's available. Let's get our cost to go ahead and correct the land that's there. And let's, let's start there because we have to do that no matter what happens. Let's, let's get an answer there and then continue. Like a hundred percent solid answer. Kevin, if I can just ask, this is Brian Kinsel, if I can just ask you, so are you talking about what it would cost to get lots B and D just usable? Is that correct? Like how much fill we would have to bring in and clearance and that type of stuff? I would start with those as well as um, just the other smaller areas, let's say, you know, over in Oak Shadows, that area. Is that land usable? And what does it cost to get it to make it 100% usable? Not just Civic Corridor, but recreation as a whole. 
the iconic, um, the iconic a lot. And then let's go ahead and see what's in reach and then develop what we can do with that budget and what land is there. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think, David, we can only have two or three priorities. What Kevin just laid out there makes sense to me. We have clearly we need management looking at the documentation, talking to Tom and that, you know, I think the field design would be easy. You could almost assign that. We got Diana's task group. Um, you know, I think that those three or four things about the most we could do. Let me let me offer a couple of things. I, I think I think you're right that we need to prioritize. I my sense, and again, I don't know where others stand, is to not look at the passive parks at this point, to not look at all of that, because that gets overwhelming. We have dozens and dozens of opportunities there, and I think we need to focus on getting some things done. The other piece, going to Kevin's first point, is I thought that that's what um, Michael or Neil said at the beginning, is depending on what we decided to put on a particular property would depend, would, would determine what sort of change we would need. So if we chose to do pickleball next to the dog park where it was conceptualized a year ago um, versus having that be parking, that might translate to different preparation of that land. Is, did I not hear that at the beginning or did I mishear that? Neil, can you help me? Yeah, David, no, that's accurate. I understand what Kev, Kevin's saying and I think I might not be understanding if we're talking about generic land prep versus specific i believe they are they're two different things yeah um okay. but yeah if we were putting down pickleball let's say lot b there's ways to create the internal drainage from the courts that you wouldn't have to invest as much into remediation if that's even needed versus if you were doing i don't know something that required grass or turf that would be a different prep as well. Um, so I feel like Kevin should speak on his own behalf because I don't, I don't want to misinterpret it or, or speak for him. I, I think you're kind of in the right spot and I appreciate that. It's, I go ahead and I look back to the fields and everything that happened and, you know, we started with muck and the percentage of muck that we use. Is that why we have the issue we have? And then we, we continually that. grew and it just kept getting those change orders. Um, I have to so uh, raise something just um it's it's just one of those things that i'm trying to to figure out what ballpark are we in right what ballpark of of the cost of developing a lands are we in um to see what's reachable eileen i think you had something so any other board comments uh, to help give direction on this not me i'm just trying to write something Other comments from Diana, Kevin, Brian. Again, again, as we as we started this, this is our our kickoff to try to get a lay of the land, if you will, and we'll have more detailed discuss. Uh, I'm sorry, not necessarily more detailed. Further discussion and decision making uh, in terms of next steps on Friday at our every other week workshop. Brian, it looks like you're gonna say something. Yeah, so can, can we just clarify exactly what we were saying the priorities are? Because people are gonna come out of this meeting who are worker in, in residence and say, well, this is what I thought was gonna happen. So we've, and, and let me know if I got it right or wrong. So we've charged management to figure out or start the conversation about, do we have issues with, with the contractor and how the fields were originally built or accepted by us? Um, we had an item where I'm not sure if it's the task groups or if it's looking at field one design with a few groups to say, does it even work? And then I think Diane went a little further to say, if we had task groups together, they could look at the other places and are they even relevant or not? And then we had um, Kevin's point of really, I think is looking at the different places and are they really feasible and what would it 
cost to have them ready to do some of the functions that were listed. I agree we're not going to do anything to passing parks, but you know, somewhere where Neil and others have said you could put pickleball there. Is that even realistic or do we really only have one or two options in town for pickleball that are real when the groups look at it and other stuff like that? And then what would it take? Lot B and D conversion, I, I don't know that we have to do. I mean, yes, we need to understand what it would cost to make them ready. And that would be interesting action to information to have, but I suspect that's something where we're not going to spend the money for a while. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's B and D. Yeah. I think Brian summarized the, uh, I agree with those points. Um, as, as we clean up the, as we clean, David, Diana. I think you've got a hand up from one of the okay. residents. Uh, we can take one minute of a comment because we we have three minutes till closure. Go ahead, Tim. You're muted, Tim. Okay, can you hear me? One minute. We have three minutes to close. All right. I just heard uh, a request to have people from Pickleball and Croquet work with someone. And so I'm just uh, asking the board who, if, if I work with both Pickleball and Croquet, so is there someone the board would like the Pickleball group and the croquet group to reach out to, to be able to help in the design and so forth. So my question okay. is, who do we reach out to? I guess they, they have your name, Tim Hannon. They have your name, so that'll go on their list and however they're- um, it, David- And you already have some people. You have yeah, some people David. Too. Yeah. For those for those that, that really want to express interest of being a part of it, you'd be working predominantly with my parks and rec coordinator. So Nikki Patton um, can can start to um, compile a list. If and some of you are probably already on that list because you've been earmarked as key influencers amongst your clubs and groups. But just, when in doubt, Nikki Patton. I've heard in five years, even though at, at the moment the conversation is all over the place. Okay. And then the other, <laughs> someone needed to be muted. Someone needs to be muted. Um, one other thing is in terms of the report, are we in agreement that the passive parks are really a non-starter for this next phase? Does that sound reasonable to the board? Brian, Kevin, Diana, the passive parks? As they were defined, yeah, I think they're just parks where kids play and stuff like that. I, I've seen that a lot, I think it's fine. Okay, so if we can take that off the agenda and then and that just condenses things. And I think Stets, I mean, you've done a great job, Neil, and out, you and your team outlining what some of the options are, but I think this will help clean this. And I think, um, are you getting enough clarity at this point to take us to Friday and then revisit and summarize? Does that work for you, Neil? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because what we'll do here is um, at the very end of the document that we have some references we cited, what we'll do is we'll now move the passive parks from this report down to like in an exhibit A. And yeah. then, then we'll just, what's left, we'll reprioritize. It sounds like the civic corridors where the team's going to be directing most of its focus. So uh, yes, this actually, this helps quite a bit for us to give you some, some updates and kind of progress report on Friday's workshop. And move Stetson down too. There's nothing we can do right now. Okay. And then, and then also just take a look at some of the other comments from tonight. If there was something that wasn't here that had been discussed before, um, again, like the lakes, particularly the, I'm, I'm thinking of the lakeside piece, uh, the performing arts piece. Just that just goes on the lakeside uh, as a, as a potential enhancement. Right. David, could I make yeah. one? Yeah. This, is, this is Brian Kinsel for everybody. Yeah. But just let me make a statement and see if you and the other board members agree. Today is February 1st. We had this conversation tonight. A couple of people online even said they liked it in the chat room. We're going to talk again on Friday. We'll keep talking at workshops. We will have a new board, at least some members, on March 5th or 2nd, so whatever the date first is. First week of March. First yeah. week of March. You know, so we'll continue to evolve this. We've still got the freeze on till July 1. We're trying to keep doing work and to keep this discussion moving so that we're ready to start implementing actions if it makes sense, leading it into July 1. Is that a correct summary? 
That's a great summary. Diana, work for you, Kevin? I agree. Okay, Neil, anything else that you need at this point? Uh, no, sir, just to manage expectations. Um, again, this was discovery and initial presentation. Uh, my team and I will be working on weekly updates for the board first, and then the board can disclose. But really, we want a, a, a viable working product by, by March 1st to put that new iteration of our board of directors into a position for their first three and a half months um, to at least have the information they require to make decisions, to table it, or to advance the research. So this, this, yeah, this is an evolution. And I do appreciate our residents that logged in. Um, I think we've had more in this than what we've had in recent board meetings and workshops. So it's, it's yeah. good. It's nice having so many resident comments. We, you know, like we've had a dozen residents comments, which is overwhelming, which is marvelous. So thank you. And thank you everyone for managing your time so well and respecting others who have something the same or something different to say. Uh, unless there's something else from Neil, Susanna, Brian, Kevin, Diana, we're gonna close. Any, anyone, any last words? Thank you all and thank the residents for participating. This was a great discussion and helped. It really is, it, I like Neil's word, discovery. It helps to move us forward uh, and, and it will help the board that gets constituted in March uh, with decision-making as, um, you know, for, for future amenities for, for our community. So thank you all. Have a good night. Have a good week. See most, see many of you on, on Friday. See you on Friday. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you.